This is Matt and Cheryl from We're in the Rockies, and today is our big day that we are talking to you all about how to plan an incredible trip to Zion National Park. You probably have a lot of questions, where to stay, what time to go, how to do some of these world famous hikes, all of those things. And today we're going to walk you through step by step on how to plan an incredible vacation. We're both history majors. We've been to the park several times. And today we want to share what we know about the park with you. Let's just get right into what there is to do at Zion National Park. And then we're going to go through a lot of the trip planning information that you need to know. The first thing is Zion is just famous for its hikes. Hiking is what you do at Zion National Park. Um, there are there are other ways to, to visit it and see it, but let's go through some of the most popular hikes to get started here. First is the Riverwalk slash the Narrows. You've probably heard about the Narrows. So the narrow the, the Riverwalk is a one mile trail that is at the end of Zion Canyon. Zion Canyon is a narrow, what we would call slot canyon essentially. It's kind of this narrow red rock canyon. The walls on each side are about 2000 feet high. It's stunning and they're these sheer walls that just come straight down. The canyon is carved by the Virgin River. You'll take a shuttle ride up the canyon and the last stop there is called the Temple of Sinawaba. At that stop, you take the Riverwalk hike for about a mile up the river, but you're walking along the sidewalk. That ends, and then you can get in the river and continue to hike up the river, and that is called the Narrows Hike. So the river walk itself is a mile, a mile one way, and then Narrows is really as far as you wanna go. And those are that is really the most popular spot of the park. And just to clear up some confusion on the Narrows, there are two ways to hike the Narrows. You can either do from the bottom up, which is what Matt just talked about, taking that river rock trail and then hiking up the canyon. Or if you are more of an adventure hiker, you can get a permit and go from the top to the bottom, which is about 16 miles. And that's beyond the scope of this. We're talking about things that just the average Joe would want to do going to Zion. But I wanted to just clear that up because I know that I believed 20 years ago when I started going to Zion, that you had to have a permit to hike the Narrows, but you don't. Most people just do their river walk, go from the bottom up, and just hike as long as they'd like to. And we have another video that goes into great detail about how to do that hike. The next one that you've probably heard of is Angel's Landing. This is a very famous hike. You get the starting point, the trailhead, is at the grotto stop on the shuttle. And you climb, I've got to look at my notes here. You climb to an elevation of 1630, it's a very, steep, strenuous hike. It's five miles out and back. It takes around four hours to do. And, um, you know, people, it's famous for, for how scary and dangerous it is because it kind of is. There's drop-offs on both side, but, sides, but you don't get a better view anywhere else of, you know, of the canyon and Zion from up top on Angel's Landing. It is quite incredible. Mm -hmm. Now, many people, when they're planning their trip to Zion, um, they only schedule like one day or two days because it might be part of a road trip. And, and one of the challenges is deciding which hike to do, Angels Landing or Narrows. Um, I wanted, I'm excited to announce that we've created an itinerary that you could actually do both those hikes in one day. And we have great details on how you can go about doing that. So check it out at we'reintherockies.com for some of our itinerary offerings. But we're going to move on and tell you a little bit more about some of the other hikes. Okay, so uh, the next probably most popular one after that is Emerald Pools, which is in Zion Canyon as well. And it is about two miles round trip. And there are three pools. There's an upper pool, middle pool, and a lower pool that you can visit. The pools themselves aren't necessarily stunning. They're, they're fine, they're nice, but, but what it does is it gets you back into these red rock walls where you're right next to them and you're surrounded. It's really, really quite stunning. After that, um, there's another hike called the Canyon Overlook Trail. And this is kind of like Angel's Landing Junior. It's a very short trail. It's only half a mile. It's not right in the, the main Zion Canyon. You actually have to drive your vehicle over to get to it. And it's again, only about one mile round trip. And you get out to this overlook ledge that is a, a beautiful overlook over that or behind that peak and just sitting here enjoying watching the sunset okay and then there is a very famous hike called the subway this is something you need a permit for this is a very long backcountry hike 
you don't get to it from Zion Canyon, you get to access it from another road. Wanted to make you aware of it because that is really a famous one you see online all the time, just incredible images of the subway. That's something you have to get a permit for well in advance. And it's considered a technical hike because there's a bit of scrambling, a bit of rappelling, and even a little bit of swimming involved in that hike. I've I've done it twice myself. It, I have to say that's probably the coolest hike I've ever done in my life. I really, really enjoyed it, but you do need a permit for it. We'll make a video on that in the near future. Okay, then there's another area of the park called Kolob Canyons. This was added to the park later but in the 1950s and it is a, a, again a separate entrance it's about an hour away from Zion Canyon but it's so it's, it's less visited than Zion Canyon but man it has some really cool stuff there as well some great hikes some the, kind of these slot canyons that you can hike into another uh, popular trail is the grotto trail which... I, I I wanted to talk about okay. the grotto trail so Matt just talked about the collab one which I believe is kind of a hidden gem collab because Zion is pretty packed you know that one canyon is where almost all the tourists are but if you drive was it like 15 20 minutes down the road it's an hour to get it's, to Kolob. Okay, okay it's an hour to get to Kolob from the zion area mm -hmm. but you'll see a lot of the very cool things that you would see in zion um like the red rock the green trees the slot canyons you'll get to see those things in Kolob. you can drive your personal vehicle around there but you're getting that experience without the crowds and so that is cool but the next thing that matt started to talk about was the grotto trail now this is not a very well-known trail. Like you'll see it in the brochure and most people don't go to Zion to do the Grotto Trail. However, I brought this up because I believe it's kind of a hidden gem. It goes between the Zion visit, or not the visitor center, but Zion Lodge and the Grotto. That's where Angel's Landing begins. It's about one mile in between. Sometimes on the shuttles, the lines can get really long and you can end up waiting for an hour to get on a shuttle. Maybe not an hour, but you can be waiting for a while but the trail between the lodge and the grotto is really nice you know when you think about going to zion you think about going on these hikes and looking down into the canyon but when you're in the middle of the canyon looking up it's equally as beautiful and that hike between those two stops the grotto trail is so pretty it's not crowded um it's nice and level it was really on my last trip i i mean i loved the adventure hikes i went on but I really loved that peaceful one mile walk just between the two. It was way better than catching the shuttle between those two spots. I just walked it and, and I loved it. Um, the other trail that we mentioned on here, it's not one that people just come to Zion for, but the Cayenta Trail also is between, between the um, Zion Lodge and, and the Grotto. And if you were feeling really ambitious, you could take that Cayenta Trail and see the Emerald Pools and then hike over to Angel's Landing and up without having to go back and catch the shuttle. And so that's just a little bonus tip for you that if you really wanted to get a good experience. And the other cool thing about the Cayenta Trail is it's it's not on the floor of the of the canyon. It's about 400 feet up. And so you're still you're kind of getting the best of both. You can still look up and 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 see the the cool walls, but you can also look down and see the middle of the canyon. And so it's a cool hike. And these are just some of the things that that we include in our itinerary or doing things like this. Something to know right now is that there are a few places that are closed. The, there's a stop on the shuttle called Weeping Rock. This is just a little walk out to this rock that, where the water's coming out of and falling down like rain. And then that also goes to Observation Point in Hidden Canyon. That whole area of the park is closed due to a rock slide or a landslide in 2019. Um, and then right now it's during COVID, so also the Court of the Patriarchs is closed and the Zion Museum, the Zion Human History Museum, where the Altar of Sacrifice is, those are both closed due to COVID, so by the time you watch this, they might be reopened. But the Weeping Rock stop should be closed for quite a while. And I think one other thing to know about the trails in Zion, they are all paved. Um, now, with that, because you'll read that about information, these are paved trails. However, when we were there last time, we paid close attention to these trails. I would not recommend taking a stroller, a wheelchair, anything like that on these trails. It's not like that's real smooth, even pavement. There are some pretty sharp inclines and declines that I think could be pretty dangerous. And so, I mean, you probably would be okay with an umbrella stroller on the river walk. But on the other tra trails, I would say if you had a little child with you, put them in a backpack 
And then if, you know, if you do struggle with mobility yourself or in someone your party does, there's lots of things that you can do in Zion to have a great trip without doing some of those more adventurous trails. And we can talk about that a little bit more later. Yep, let's talk about what to pack All right. your trip to Zion. Okay, number one, you're gonna want a good water bottle. They recommend about two liters of water per day, per person, two to three. And you know, Zion can get super hot. So just make sure you have enough, but you'll want a good water bottle or a backpack with a bladder in it just to stay hydrated. Um, so that's another thing you'll want a backpack. You need to store some stuff in it. So make sure you've got a good bag and, and enough room for the things you'll need. You're going to want <laughs> what to wear. Okay, you're gonna wanna wear like your workout clothes because you are hiking around and it is a workout. So whatever you would wear to the gym would be appropriate for Zion and you won't be alone wearing stuff like that. I feel like Zion is the place that people are feeling pretty free. See a lot of guys without their shirts on and- A lot um, of girls with sports bras and spandex yep, pants. So. Uh, it's uh, definitely <laughs> <laughs> so whatever you're feeling it's nice, comfortable warm in, weather so yes whatever you're feeling comfortable in you know as far as workout clothes go wear that wear a good pair of trail runners like some you know running shoes with some good traction on them moisture wicking socks um you know it's hot desert climate so chapstick sunscreen moisturizer make sure you've got that bring like some breath mints and gum your mouth's gonna get dry while you're hiking and then one of my faves is I love to buy like these Mayo water enhancers just to squirt in my water um, that has the electrolytes in it for the sweating out that you're going to be doing. You know, if you don't want to take something like that, take something a little salty so you can replenish the, replenish the salts that you're losing as you hike. But um, those are good things. And of course, you don't want to forget your camera because you're going to be seeing some incredible things. And if you're hiking the narrow there, narrows, there are some really specific things you need to bring, but watch our video on that. Check out our website and it has all sorts of good uh, tips on how to hike the narrows. Okay, so is there anything to do besides hiking? So not everybody is a hiker or is able to, to hike a lot. So what else can you do? Well, the, think of this, think of Zion Canyon as part of Canyon country. There is just a ton of things to do in the whole area. There are national parks such as Bryce Canyon, the Grand Canyon that aren't that far away. There are st there's also a national monument called Cedar Breaks National Monument that's close, that's relatively close. There is Snow Canyon, which is a state park that's relatively close. So there's incredible sightseeing. So just sightseeing is amazing. And even if you couldn't do the hikes, you could take the shuttle up Zion Canyon, get out at Zion Lodge and enjoy it. Maybe walk the Riverwalk Trail. That would be an amazing day. Just, just doing that would be amazing if you had never been to Zion before, it really would. And then, and then you can drive up through the tunnel out on Highway 9 out to the east side of the park. And that is just an incredibly scenic drive. So there, just in Zion, there's plenty of sightseeing to do if you're not a hiker, but outside of Zion, there's plenty of other national parks and places, state parks that you can go visit and, and just do sightseeing. Now, if there's, there's plenty of other things to do, there's the, a larger city called St. George that's about an hour away from Zion that has, that's the largest city that's near, Zion National Park and it has everything there. It's like an outdoor mecca for just fun. <laughs> it's got ATVing, um, boating. There's, uh, you can ATV on, on sand, uh, sand dunes. Okay, you can go sand, play in the sand dunes. There's parks, sports complexes, plays, museums, uh, mountain bike or red rock biking, I guess. There's rock climbing, there's Wow, there's just a ton of things to do in that yeah. whole area. It's and, insane. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people, I mean, this is a good thing to know. A lot of people go to St. George for like sports tournaments because, you know, it is good weather almost the entire year. And, um, but you know, once in a while there's a little break in your day. You can do a day trip from St. George to Zion and do those hikes and then go back to St. George. And that's where you really, I mean, they have fun centers. There's so many things to do in St. George. My, my mother owns a condo there. We go there a few times a year and just go chill, have fun. But as far as like, if you weren't wanting to hike all day and you were in the Zion area, um, there are there are three rental big rental shops actually in the Zion area, Zion Outfitters, Zion Guru, and Zion Adventure Company. They all rent bikes. It'll run you between $25 and $35 a bike per day, or you know you can rent for half day. They have trailers. People rock climb in Zion. So if you're a rock climber, you can get into that. Or I, you know, I don't rock climb but I like to watch the rock climbers in Zion. It's incredible to see them do that. Mm. Um, and like Matt said, 
there's really pretty beautiful scenic drives through Zion Canyon. You know, the main canyon, you can't drive your car up unless you're going November through April, but the, um, but the other part of the canyon, you can drive your car and, and you know, us as Utahns get a little spoiled that we see this beautiful red rock, you know, fairly often if we drive a few hours south, we get to see it. But if you're not from Utah or this area, mm. it is just breathtaking. Yes. I mean, you know, like you don't have to be an avid hiker to see Zion. I mean, the canyon is the canyon, whether you're in the car or on your feet, you get to see those things. And really, there's nowhere else in the world like it. It is so incredible. And so if you're not hiking, don't feel like you're not going to have a great trip because you still can. Zion is unusual too in that you see it from the bottom. Uh, most national parks, you're you're up on the top looking down into the canyon, but Zion, you're in the bottom of the canyon looking up, and it's just it's mm -hmm. just amazing, just amazing. Zion also has great ranger programs. Like their nighttime programs are really fun to go to. They'll teach you about all aspects of the park, and they do them right outside the campgrounds, outside of Zion Lodge, and then they have them throughout the day where there's just ranger talks. Now, you know during COVID, those schedules are a little, a little just different but on a typical year those things are available and they're fun and exciting there's also animals albeit like they're we're in the desert yep. but you'll see a lot of mule deer around so you can kind of look around for animals um if you go towards the east entrance of the park you are likely to see a bighorn sheep mm -hmm. in fact one time we were there and we saw a bighorn sheep sitting next to the sign that says bighorn sheep look out for them mm -hmm. it's kind of funny but. There's also turkeys in the main canyon that you'll see <laughs> right there as you're taking the shuttle. Last time we were doing the riverside walk, uh, it, we saw a blue heron, uh, just this really cool big bird that was there. It's surprisingly that you can, it's kind of surprising that mm -hmm. you don't think about Zion for animals like you do Yellowstone or something like that, but it's cool. There's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. And then if you wanted to venture to Kanab, they also have the really cool red rock and some cool hikes there. But something that people love in Kanab is the Best Friends Animal Sanctuary where they have taken in animals from all over, like pigs, horses, cats, dogs. Mm -hmm. And like, these are animals that have, that have special problems. And they take care of these animals. And seriously, these animals have it better than a lot of people do. They take really good care of these animals. And, and people can even book vacations to go there. We'll do a video on that sometime too, because it's a pretty cool place, especially if you're an animal lover. It's a huge complex. You can take a tour. They drive you around and show you the whole thing. Um, and it's free. Just saying, it's free. It's a free, free. It's a free tour, and it's. And I think you can even get like a pretty good valued vegan lunch. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> Kanab is over on the east side of the park, about an hour away. But uh, and it's part of kind of an outdoor mecca as well. But anyway, those are some options for you if you're not a major hiker or if you're looking for other things to do in the area. Really, you could spend a week at, at Zion and just do tons of things around the area. Okay, let's talk about safety. All right. Number so, one. Yeah is dehydration. The number one problem there is dehydration. If you're not from this area, if you're not from the Rocky Mountain West, it's really dry here. And most of you watching this, I don't think are, are from around here. Uh, if you're coming from the East, for example, it is really dry here. Uh, and it might it might be a little bit of an adjustment. I remember I lived in Maryland for a couple of years and when I came home, I was getting some bloody noses because I was dried out. It was really kind of weird. Um, now that you're gonna know that's gonna happen to you, but but you will probably notice that it's a lot more dry It's really hot. This is in the desert. So you need to stay you, you need to make sure you have Water and stay hydrated. Yep. I interviewed the ranger. She told me that was a number one problem People get in trouble by not drinking enough water. So just be prepared. But one good thing to know. Oh my gosh We just had a bird wow. come get us <laughs> um, The ranger told us that um, well actually not the ranger, but there are water stations everywhere in Zion National Park. Like they're aware that dehydration is a risk and they're pretty on top of the situation. It's just up to you to bring a water bottle and fill it up before you go out for a hike. And, and I know that in years past, they're pretty against selling the plastic water bottles, you know, just the disposable ones. So just make sure you have one with you in case they don't have them in there. I know they go back and forth on, well, people need water, but we don't want to encourage, <laughs> you know, polluting our parks. So. Just bring a good water bottle container with you and you should be fine. All right, the next one is squirrels. This sounds so funny, but those animals are not scared of people. And of course, they're so darling that you want to feed these cute little squirrels and you can tell they get fed because they're, they're a little on the chubby side there. 
and but they bite people get bit by squirrels every year so resist the temptation to pet that cute little squirrel and just don't feed them cliffs and ledges is the next safety item <laughs> people get too close to the cliffs and they fall off it happens every once in a while um, we do hear it seems like we read in the newspaper about once a year somebody dies at zion national park it seems like so be careful about that and oh and even we were at the overlook one time and our little nephew was running behind us and tripped and fell and if a fence hadn't have been there he would have gone right off that cliff <laughs> so yes he would have he absolutely would have so if you've got little ones in tow like you want to know what is ahead of you because you just don't know when a cliff's going to be yeah. 20 feet around the corner you just don't know that and so and most of them don't have fences there like this one did so yes you gotta yes be okay flash floods is another issue that that you'll hear about with zion national park it does have i think around 10 to 15 floods a year uh, the park is always changing it's amazing um the, the water just comes through and it wipes out the road sometimes it's kind of crazy so you know you can look it up on their website flash flood potential for the time that you're going to visit but um, that's something to be aware of. Okay. And then falling rocks again, because of the erosion and stuff like that, because the red rock is softer, it's, it's always, the park is always kind of changing. And so, um, there can be rock slides and stuff there. Yeah. Too. You'll see signs around on the roads while you're driving around just to be aware of those rocks. So yeah, let's talk about how to get there. So how to get there. Um, most, most people will fly into Las Vegas and then they'll stay in the St. George area. And Las Vegas is about two hours away from the park, I believe. And two to two and a half hours away from the park, I believe. So most people, the cheapest route is to fly into Las Vegas and then drive up and stay somewhere in the vicinity at St. George area. Plus, it'd be uh, pretty fun to like get some Vegas, get some uh -huh. nature. Like, oh yeah, I think that's... That's a fun combo. Yes, I think that's really <laughs> a, a big part of the trip for a lot of people. Now, a lot of people are kind of going on like a national park scenic tour so they they might be coming from the grand canyon or from bryce canyon or doing all of them and in that case you would be getting to zion from the east side um you'd be coming you know in a different way real backcountry remote those are really remote areas um so th those are really kind of the two avenues you're coming in either from the west or from vegas area i, I know a lot of people come from california up through vegas and all that or from the east probably from like Bryce or from Grand Canyon. Okay, let's talk about where to stay. Zion National Park only has one hotel inside the park. It's Zion Lodge. It was built in 1927, you just, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, 1930s or something 1930s, like that. 1930s, yeah, it's not, it's pretty old. It does not look that nice. Um, it's burned down what, once or? It burned down once, they, they rebuilt it eventually to kind of match up the original um, architecture and stuff like that. So. Uh, I don't know. But, I think, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but it's, it's okay. It's, it's fine. fine. It's not like, I guess I'm comparing it to like the old Faithful Lodge. It's it's yeah. not that. <laughs> but it is right yeah. inside the park. You can, you know, even though you can't um, drive a car through the canyon, you can drive your car through the canyon to Zion Lodge if you're staying there. However, an important thing to know is that, you know, this year we have to get, we have to reserve our shuttle tickets. You do not automatically have a shuttle ticket just because you're staying at Zion Lodge. So just keep that in mind if you make a reservation there. Um, and you don't want to make your reservation up to a year in advance. Because um, yeah. there's just not a ton of rooms and a lot of people visit Zion. So if you're wanting to stay in the park at the lodge, you'll want to, to get on that reservation as soon as you can. So that is the only place you can stay inside Zion National Park. The rooms range between like 220 and 280 a night or something like that. Then the, the next closest place is the city of Springdale, which is this really cute little town that sits right outside of the park. Um, you'll drive through Springdale to get to the, the parking area there at Zion. In fact, you might end up parking in Springdale. And there are over 30 places to stay in Springdale. And a lot of them are really nice, come with really high reviews. I've done a whole nother video on that. We would recommend probably the uh, Zion Canyon Bed and Breakfast the Desert Pearl Inn or the Best Western Plus in, in Springdale. And, but a lot of places there that you can stay. Generally, Zion and Springdale, you're gonna be paying around 200 a night or more All during right. the busy season. Okay, the next closest is Laverkin. Laverkin and Hurricane uh -huh. probably together. By the way, um, the city looks like Hurricane, but it's pronounced Hurricane. 
and they are <laughs> they sit right next to each other and they are kind of the the jumping off point they're about 30 minutes away from the park they're the best value okay they're about 30 they're about 30 minutes away from the park and they have you know competitive rooms in fact a lot of them are really kind of budget hotels there mm -hmm. not a lot of real high-end hotels there and we would recommend best western or la quinta inn in laverkin in that area yeah and i was looking i mean there's a big difference in hotel prices between the season and the off season like we were there a month ago and i thought our hotel room was like 200 a night or 100 a night I don't remember. it was close to 200 a night and it wasn't that nice of a hotel but we were there during peak travel season and when I was looking at it today, it seemed like the rooms are almost, this is, we're shooting this on actually Halloween. Um, <laughs> but it's, but the, the rooms were quite a bit cheaper. Um, so just something to keep in mind that if you go in the off season, your lodging will be quite a bit less expensive. And Pretty also, good. also other things to know about is that Hurricane and Leverkin have grocery stores. So if you didn't want to eat out, if you wanted to make your own lunch and pack it into the park, because, oh, that's one thing we did not mention. Zion Lodge does have a restaurant and a counter service restaurant. The, the lodge, like the indoor one is closed right now because of COVID, but the counter service one's open, but that's the only place in the park you can get food. And so um, there, are, there are actually, a, there's a subway right at the entrance of the park in Springdale. You could go pick up a sandwich, or if you're staying in Laverk in a hurricane, go to the grocery store and grab, grab some food and pack it in. Um, but yeah, or you could go to the counter service at the Zion Lodge. We waited. We waited about 30 minutes to get our lunch there. The meals were, they were okay. They were fine. About $10 per person. It was during COVID, so it was totally different because we had to do the takeout thing. So they have a restaurant and a cafe. Uh, if you're going to eat at the restaurant, if you're going to eat dinner at the restaurant, get reservations ahead of time. Yeah. Okay, the next closest area is the city of St. George. So St. George is about 45 minutes to an hour away from the park. And it is, it has a ton of places to stay. You're going to find anything you want there. There's VRBOs, there's Airbnbs, there's a ton of hotels, there's condos, there's so like there's you, upscale, yeah. there's like divey cheap ones. Yeah. You would have a lot of choices in St. George. Mm -hmm. And and that's a good base to hit other things as well. So St. George is probably the most popular place to stay. And then there are some places on the east side of the park, but I won't spend a lot of time going into those because I did a whole nother video on where to stay when you visit Zion National Park. So Okay, Check that out. let's talk about campgrounds. If you want to camp, which is a really fun thing to do. We love to camp in Zion, mm -hmm. but because there's been so many crowds, we hardly ever camp there anymore. We're usually staying in St. George when we go. But we used to go every, well, almost every spring for Easter and we would dye eggs and um, it was a cool, cool time. Uh, and it's, the camping there is, is different um, because it's, this red desert, rock desert yeah. country <laughs> so this isn't like camping in a forest like you think of with national parks yeah, no pine trees it's quite sparse <laughs> to, to us it's cool i still think it's cool but i've heard some people say well this is kind of weird camping you know because they're expecting something different but um this is desert camping so they have two main campsites there and they're right next to each other there is the watchman and... which is like a quarter mile like you can walk right into zion to the visitor center and catch a shuttle from watchman uh -huh. So that's one of the real benefits of staying there. Yeah, they're right next to the visitor center. Both of them really are within yeah. walking distance of the visitor center. And then Watchman has 189 sites, 90 with electric hookups. And then there's South Campground, which again, right next to it. 117 sites, no RV hookups. That doesn't yeah. matter. No, but I mean, you can park your RV. You can take your RV okay, in there. And there's, and there's dump stations at both of them. But yeah, there's no, you know, no way to plug in your RV in the South one. And you have to get reservations, well, yeah, I think you have to get reservations for both of them. Yeah. In the past, I think South has been a first come, first serve, but right now they're both on the reservation system. So don't count on going to the campgrounds and hoping for a walk-in. Uh, like we've said multiple times in this video, it has been, Zion has exploded in popularity. Mm -hmm. People go there and it's just, you just need to have a plan when you go to Zion just to be able to see the things you want to do and find a place to stay. Oh, other couple of things to know at those campgrounds, flush toilets, but no hot water, no showers, but there is like a water fill up station to fill up your water bottles. And, um, don't plan on, on having a campfire. You know, this is a desert dry. They don't allow fires because they don't want a forest fire. Um, yeah. Okay. We recommend it. We love camping there. We do. We love it. Let's okay. talk about getting around, getting around. How do you get around the park? 
Between April and October, you must ride the shuttle into Zion Canyon. Let me back up just one minute. There are four main roads that go through Zion National Park. Zion Canyon is by far the most popular one. That that's what you think of when you think of Zion National Park. From there, there's an east road that spurs off called Highway 9 that goes to the east entrance. That one you can drive. All the other ones you can drive. Zion Canyon, you have to take the shuttle into. Then there's a backcountry road called Kolob Terrace Road. And then there's another road out on the west side of the park called, well, that's Kolob Canyons. Okay, so two roads with, two roads with the name Kolob in it. Kind of confusing. The main Zion Canyon that everybody thinks of, you have to take a shuttle to get into um, between April and October. There are, and, yes. And we have, okay, the Zion shuttle system is easy, but it's complicated right now because of COVID. You have to make reservations, and it is rumored that that's going to, main, they're going to maintain that system just because it has been, there has, crowding has been such an issue in Zion in the last few years that, that they possibly will have you do a reservation system. So we're not going to get into the great details of that, but please watch our video on it because it will walk you through step-by-step step how to do this. But what you need to know is there's actually two shuttle systems in the park. There's the actual shuttle system from the Zion Visitor Center all the way up the canyon. And then there's a second um, shuttle system from Springdale to get you to the Visitor Center in Zion National Park. And, yes. um, and you do not need a reservation to do the Springdale shuttle. You only need it for the one in Zion. And there's two places you can park your car. Okay, first you can park at Zion National Park at the Visitor Center. There's a pretty big parking lot. However, it does fill up very early very in the morning. Early. Um, by eight, I'm sure. Uh, by eight or even 7.30, that is filled up. Yeah. If you're getting there after that time, you're going to need to park in town in Springdale. And the parking will cost you between 20 and $25 a day, depending on where you park. However, we do have a special tip for you about that. If you are planning on hiking the Narrows, all those places they'll they'll give you especially we know that zion adventure company and zion guru who um zion outfitters is the um, rental shop that's right right outside the park but the other two were a little more in springdale but they do have parking lots and if you purchase 25 dollars worth of things which is about how much your rental equipment will cost they'll let you park there for free and um and I wanted to just do another pitch for our product. We have these amazing itineraries that will make your trip awesome. And they cost less than it costs to park your car for one day in Springdale. Just keep that in mind when you're getting ready to plan and things like that. You've already saved $25 by knowing that little tip. Yep, yep, <laughs> little, uh, little ninja tip there for you. So um, that's what we would recommend for sure. So if you could park inside the park, do and walk it. over to Zion yeah. Outfitter and get your Narrows gear, um, then that's good. If you can't, then you could park at Zion Adventure or Zion Guru, rent your gear from them, and you get the free parking. If you're not doing the Narrows, we have another little money saver for you in our in our itinerary there for you. Okay, let's talk really quick about what to eat. I really do recommend hitting the grocery stores in Hurricane, and they actually have restaurants like good ones in there. One of the our sister-in-law's favorite one is Lupita's Mexican and she loves it and that's right in hurricane to try um some of the people we talked to while we were hiking along the trail said they love oscars and springdale for dinner mm -hmm. but for breakfast now if you're not a utah local <laughs> you're gonna think this sounds crazy but there's this gas station called maverick that is like <laughs> it's like the nordstrom's of gas stations like it is huge amazing and there's a good selection of food i hate gas station food i never even go in them to buy food but I'll buy breakfast from Maverick because I could get fruit, I can get like a good breakfast sandwich, and then you're not waiting in line, getting to the park late because you had to go to a restaurant. Just go get a breakfast sandwich from Maverick and you'll be good to go. And it's right on the corners you turn in to go to Zion from Hurricane. Yeah, it's right um, in Laverkin. Yeah, right in Laverkin. So you can do that. And then for lunch, you know, there's the subways, at actually both entrances, the east and the south entrance of Zion, you could pick up a sandwich and they, I wrote down their hours just for you. They open at 8 a.m. Not typical for a subway, but typical for a Zion subway. Still, uh, you might even want to get to the park earlier than that. So we recommend taking a picnic and some snacks because you'll be out hiking around quite a bit. You might not be able to get back to Zion Lodge at the right time or whatever. So we recommend at least taking some food to get you through. Um, and then you could eat at Zion Lodge too. Uh, In fact, that's there. one other special tip to know about the shuttles. 
your shuttle ticket is only good to get on at the visitor center one time. Like if you go out and about and then go back to the visitor center, they're not gonna let you back on that shuttle with your ticket. They let you on with one time with that. Once you're in the canyon, you can go around from stop to stop, but yeah. once you're back at the visitor center, there your ticket's not good. It's only good for that hour window you get that reservation for. But there we do have one other special tip about this, about the shuttles. Just in case you did not get a reservation, if you go at three o'clock in the afternoon, they have 500 standby shuttle tickets. So if by chance you did not get a reservation, your all is not lost. You can go at three and hopefully get a walk in at that point. We did a whole other video on the shuttles, but I did talk to somebody who said they didn't have the ticket and they went there and they rented an electric bike, an e-bike, I guess they call yeah. them, right? Um, and biked up the canyon so you could do that too you can actually get a bike and bike into the canyon and, and do it that way and with the e-bike it was a lot easier and stuff so they they loved it they had a great time and that is a great tip if you can't get tickets don't uh don't fret you can still enjoy zion canyon yes thank you so much for staying with us we are almost to <laughs> we are almost done <laughs> but we wanted to say once again matt and cheryl we're in the rockies we have tons of videos. We have videos like this for Yellowstone and Grand Teton too, and we're gonna be doing more in the upcoming years. So subscribe to our channel if you were interested in just enjoying your trips to the West. But let's talk really quickly about the best time to visit and how long you should plan on going. The busy season is the summer, uh, obviously. And, and then also in October, the school system lets out, has a fall break in Utah, and then all of Northern Utah goes to Southern Utah to play. Uh huh. So and... it's, it's generally the third, like the school will be out the Thursday and Friday, the third week of October. I October, in my opinion, is the best time to go to Zion, but avoid avoid that third week in October. Like, do it. Spring a... is great too, though. Spring, spring is, is great, great to too. But yeah, the third week in October gets really busy because of the Utah fall break. So in the off season. Uh, Zion's open year round because it has good enough weather to be open in the off season, but it does get snow. It gets cold in the winter. Mm -hmm. So if you're going in J January or something like that, you need to be prepared that it, it will be cold. And if you're going June through September, you need to plan on the temperatures getting above 90 every day. So that's why they're saying bring a lot of water because it's hot, dry air. And then you're the heat reflecting off those red rocks. It is hot, hot, hot. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just we yeah we recommend either spring or October. I I would avoid the place June, July, and August if you can, but you can still have a great trip if that's when you have to go. Okay, next question is how long should you go for? How many days do you need to do Zion? Uh, we think you can do Zion really well in two days. That allows you to split up the Angels Landing hike and the Narrows hike and do them on separate days, and then still do a bunch of other stuff um, in the area and. Wow, you can get just a really, really great vacation in two days at Zion. I know plenty of people spend more time there, which which would be great too. And then a lot of people team it up with Bryce Canyon, as I mentioned. They'll do kind of a big road trip, Bryce or even the Grand Canyon, and do um, a couple days there. So, Yes, and as we've researched this trip and I looked at just the attendance at the park, since 2000, like the year 2000, the park's attendance has doubled. It's gone from about... 2.5 million visitors in 2000 to five, not thousand, 2.5 million visitors in the year 2000 to almost 5 million in the year 2019. Um, 2020 has been a little different because of COVID and because of um, the limitation of the shuttle tickets, like the availability of them. But Zion is a crowded, busy place. And that is why it is so important that you have a plan when you go there. You want to make sure that you're that you're getting to go on those hikes you want to go on and do them correctly and just be able to enjoy it. Um, and we have all these videos that can help you plan your trip with beautiful shots and good tips and you can piece this together on your own. You are welcome to do that. There's so much good information out there. But for a cost of less than it would cost you to park your car in Springdale, you can get an itinerary that we've put together that will just give you such peace of mind when you go on your trip. I think that when you get ready to go on a trip, it can be a really pleasurable experience as you daydream about the things you're going to do. You can watch videos and, and pictures and read about it and just be excited to go. Or it can be a pretty anxious time when you worry about, well, how much time will it take to do this? Am I healthy enough to do this? How long will it take to do this? Or how will I get my shuttle ticket? There's all these 
questions that can make the preparation for a trip stressful, but when you purchase an itinerary that has really good information step by step, you know, what order to do things in every day with maps and tips and things like that, you can go on this trip to Zion and not have to worry about all those things. You just can daydream about the trip and know that once you get there, you will be taken care of. And so I encourage you to go to our website and check it out. I, I feel like I can talk this up because Matt writes our itineraries and I love going on the, I call them the itineraries, but all you have to do is go to the website, buy it and print it off and you are good to go. Yeah. So walk you through it. Uh, we have one for one day, one for two days right now. We'll be preparing more that includes Bryce and I'll also be preparing an audio guide for you to, to tell you about the park. There's plenty of stories. And, and a lot of information about the park that we want to share with you that's just really cool that'll enhance your trip. We want you to love your trip to the West. And that's that's really what we're after here for. And um, so we have right now a one day and a two day itinerary. And on the one day, it's actually four different itineraries within the one day to give you plenty of options. So don't, don't buy it thinking yes. that you're just trapped into like only one thing. You actually have a bunch of options to do on there if you're just there for one day. And one of them includes like if you're not a hiker, like mm -hmm. how to enjoy the park if you're not a hiker. And other one's more of like a, a, I call it the warrior plan where you're hitting a bunch of hikes in one day. So each of those plans will break down how long it will take you, just kind of how difficult that itinerary is and it'll break you down, but there'll be something for you in there. And then the two day itinerary allows you to see the really popular cool spots in the park, but with a little bit of extra time to do some off the beaten path things and enjoy some new adventures. Yeah, we made this because we got a channel, we got a comment on our channel one day. Somebody said they went to the national park and it was a miserable experience because it was just so crowded and it was, and I thought, oh man, I wish, you know, I wish I could have given them this information so that they would really love their trip but you know we we have always just loved vacationing and road tripping and um it's a big part of our our life and we want to take our kids on these trips because we want to expose them to other things and the beautiful nature and history and stuff like that so it really means a lot to us yes but we hope that you have found this video helpful and whether you're watching to plan a trip or just to learn more about zion we hope that you found the information you've needed if you have give it a like subscribe and thanks for watching. Safe travels.